Hi, I'm Dennis. I'm here with Amy. We're with the Youth Media Team. We're here at ICT EDU. Here, we're here with Barney Brown. Can you tell us a bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. So I'm Barney Brown. I grew up in Cambridge in England. And having gone to art school, I studied film, filmmaking. And then from there, I worked in TV for a bit. And then I was also a musician, so I was in various different bands. And whilst I was in those bands, they needed websites building. So I taught myself how to build websites. So I then ended up in an IT team and then went over to a communications team. So I sort of switched between being in IT teams and communications teams. And then I moved back to Cambridge where I'm now the head of digital communications. So there's a team of 11 of us and we make films, we build websites and we run social media for the University of Cambridge. You talked about how Cambridge used various different social platforms which they which have you found, which have you found um, to be the most effective. That's a great question. So it's changed a bit over the years, actually. We first started out during the 800th anniversary, which was 2009. We had quite a few films made, so we thought, where do people go online to find films? YouTube. Right, we're going to put all of our films on YouTube, because there's no point in producing something if you don't put it somewhere where people can find it. So YouTube, still for us, is the best place for video. We then also started using Facebook, and Twitter, and we found that Facebook is probably the most effective for getting in contact with students that might want to study at the university. Twitter for us is probably the most effective for sharing our research and getting some of our academics to speak to other academics and other institutions. And then Instagram is really great for like an international audience that wants to see pictures of the heritage of the university, as well as photos of the research and things like that. From your LinkedIn profile, we found that you're involved in the Intercontinental Music Lab. Can you tell us a bit about oh, this? Oh, I'm so glad you asked that question. So, here's one of the great things about social media. Right about the time Facebook came out, a lot of my friends that I grew up with in Cambridge moved overseas. One went to America, one went to Japan, one went to Australia. We used to make loads of music together. We couldn't do it anymore, so we were really frustrated. So we made up this thing called the Intercontinental Music Lab, which ended up being 15 different people around the world we came up with a theme, and the first theme we came up with was science. As musicians, we all chose a different topic within science. So, for example, somebody sent me the topic of Galileo. We all had to record a backing track, like an instrumental track, and then we sent it to the other people. We said, right, here's a backing track. You've got to write and record a song about Galileo. So I had that track. I had to sing about him, and then we, we put it all into one album, which was called Superheroes of Science. It's just that we did that as fun to share music between our friends that had moved uh, moved abroad. What we didn't realise was that it would then get downloaded about 200,000 times. Mm. <laughs> so that was really... That, that's not why we did it, but because so many people started listening to it, we, we kept it going. And since then, we've recorded about eight albums. We've recorded one about the sea, um, space, ancient Greeks. Uh, what else have we done? Mysteries of the Unexplained, War... And uh, I guess the most challenging album probably was called Short Songs About Spielberg, which was about 15 60-second songs about the... Was, was um, about 15 60-second songs about the works of Steven Spielberg. And if you try writing a 60-second song, that's really quite, <laughs> quite challenging. So we haven't done anything for a while, but that, that's what that is. The other thing about the, the, that Intercontinental Music Lab is... We put it together around about the same time as Creative Commons. So all of the music that we put out has got a Creative Commons license on it, so you feel free to use it for whatever you want. So yeah, that's what that is. The, the idea behind this is really interesting. How did you come to it? What, the Intercontinental Music Lab? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, like I say, we were trying to work out how can we use technology to get our friends to be able to still have that feeling of being in a band together contributing to a shared creative experience and so it seemed that if we could work out the workflow for composing a song in such a way that people in Australia or Japan and America be, could be working on one bit of that song and then swap it with people in the other countries then we would be able to to play together as it were so that that's kind of where it went, came from thank you you're welcome